So today is uh, the eight, I believe. I'm uh, getting ready to head to the blendery. There we go. Hold on. And they started early. I'm just now starting to record. Today at the blendery, we're going to shoot an interview with our guy Tyler. It's a technical company, which you guys have probably seen on another thing. And we've got a week plan with him. About to get ready for KBF. Get out there with our guy Tim. What we learned is if ever you want to go to the Kentucky Bourbon Fest, you need to get hotels quick because everybody literally in their mama goes. So now the hotels that are the closest hotels are 50 miles away from KBF. Third, we're uh, going to join brothers serving others. It's a group of men that get together and go out and help the community. Could send, submit small tasks so they raise money, help give charity. It's a beautiful thing. I've learned a lot about giving back and you know paying it forward and I always pay it forward but I never thought about the organization of paying it forward and those oftentimes are what you learn from people who do business. They've got these not-for-profits while they make profit and you know they donate, give back, tax write-offs, all kinds of good things but they actually go out and do some amazing work. So I invited even Jamarcus and his son to join um, Tim and I and his group of guys to help um, you know this guy will learn some more but it's about 11 43 i've been up since yesterday already been to the gym <laughs> i was there by 7 30. so stay tuned people day eight uh it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun and we're gonna be drinking some a little bit of whiskey today too man uh, they got to the boundary it's about 30 minutes away from the house the drink don't need no mix what the fuck is this I'm trying to get faded, baby. Please don't. What up, man? What's the word? How we doing? <laughs> so far, so good, man. Thank you. Good to see you. You too, man. So, we moving the house today, or what are we doing? What's that? With the brother serving others. Oh, a <laughs> uh, demo. A demo, what does that mean? Demo day. Demolition. Oh, oh. I've never seen this kind of stuff, man. Ha! Demo's the easy part. It's the picking it up, huh? Picking it up sucks, and then, uh, and then rebuilding it sucks. Because demo is where you kind of find, oh shit, this was done wrong, or oh shit, the electrical is about to burn the house down, or oh shit, there's mold everywhere, or like, demo very rarely just is like, oh cool, yeah, let's pull this. Pull this down and okay, yeah, let's put new sheetrock up. Like, doesn't work that way. <laughs> especially, the, especially on houses like this. Dang. Well, I got technical. Um, Tyler coming out, like I said, he beat us in at 1 30. He lives in Princeton. So it's a little oh, bit shit. Of, yeah, a little bit of a waste, but he said he'll make it. You'll see him in. Um, his name is Tactical. No, his name is Tyler Clickham. Oh. Like, like, something like that. I oh. just call him Tactical Tyler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but. But you'll see that he's a super eager guy, man. He's a young cat. And uh, he's just like, he wants to do good, man. What does he do now? Well, he does finance, um, insurance stuff with uh, one of those guys uh, that we went to go do the whiskey and cigars with. And then he also, him and four guys, I think, own and run that tactical strategic thing. And he's an ex-Marine, so he's got a whole, a whole thing in play. But, uh, and then Andrew, the former Marine. Former, former, former. They, they don't like when you say X. Because uh -huh. to them, they're always a Marine. Like, oh. See? I'm glad you told me, man. Yeah. So if you ever say X Marine, they get offended. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's personal. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know, man. I appreciate that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then Andrew said they'll probably stop by about two or so, man. And then I'm Who? Actually, that dude, Andrew. Yeah, oh, the same dude. The, Vulcan, the yeah. Vulcan guy. Oh, yeah, okay. cool. Like too, and, and then we're doing. I'm doing this podcast tomorrow um, at nine thirty in the morning. So nice. So he has his own podcast. Yeah, yeah. He's got one called um, Tech Tech Talk. So he brings in um, ex veterans and various yeah. other people, 
and they sit down and talk and he actually was like, yo, could you get your guy uh, Scott to come out that sells the optics at the gun shows? I said, yeah. So I said, well, Scott and Messer's getting the address, so he's scheduled for 10, 15. Uh, mine will start at 9, 30, man. That'll be a good little one. Nice. You know, gotta keep the show rolling, man. And so all the places are all gone for uh, KBF, huh? Um, well, I looked today because when I yeah. when I saw that it was Bourbon Week, fuck, oh, that's where all these idiots that <laughs> buy anything and drive up the price and like they're yeah, it's it is, it is so commercialized out there now, and it and there's so many there's so many people. <laughs> He's wired up. He's like, but but yeah it's uh I, I looked there's a couple places that would still work but it's like if you don't if we don't get something soon it's it'd be a problem huh uh it'll be an inconvenience <laughs> so so i'm trying to see who's all going and I actually asked my brother if he wants to go, so I'll see what he says. Yeah, let me know, man. Just let me know the price, man. We, we lost all the money on, on, the, on the last Airbnb was supposed to go out to the Kentucky. That's the only thing I couldn't get a refund on, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't know how thick it was going to be in terms of how many people are going to be out there. Uh, but it makes sense. You know, oh, fuck, everybody and their mama would go to this damn event. Three mm. things sold out in two seconds when they dropped it. So if you don't get there close, quick. Yeah, these, these junkie... Like twelve hundred square foot houses are going for like three grand a night. Oh my god! That, that are right across from the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, which I should have booked that last year because the Ryan Wester, the redhead comedian guy, uh -huh. he had he had one right across that was money, like walking right across the street to the festival. And they were staying there, <laughs> and, and it was it was super nice to be able to like get all of our stuff and then just walk across the street and like set our stuff down there. So I wasn't staying there, but he's like, "Hey man, here's a key. Like, crash. Yeah, go here, take a dump if you need to, <laughs> refresh, take a nap, whatever. Leave all your bottles here." So what you're telling me is, I for sure. So how I normally strategically think of things, I do it in threes. So they're like, "Hey, well, how do you know about this restaurant?" When, what makes you tell us about it, Trevor? I know you go a lot of places. I go back and I have to try at least two to four things on the menu. You normally get appetizers or something. I said, once I think they're pretty consistent, it's good flavor and good food, I'll be like, hey, you guys should try this spot. So like a KBF type thing, I'll go to three years at least of that thing because I'm like, that's the minimum of work if I'm going to be in the whiskey for 10, 20 years. So you go, say less. That means when we leave next year, go ahead and book that thing. Dude, you're... Your way of uh, relating, or your skill of relating to people and um, meeting people, is is really really an asset down there. Like it, it's one of those deals where you can you can you go down there and then you could no place to stay, no place whatever, and then all of a sudden, yeah, you're staying in the castle, or you're doing this or that, or, or you're you're going on barrel picks, or like last year. Last year, we ran into some dudes, and uh, we were actually, we went over to our, uh, Andy and I, we have a mutual friend that started Old Louisville uh, Whiskey Company, and so we were going over to see his distillery, because we hadn't seen it before, it's kind of in that part of uh, downtown Louisville, and uh, it's kind of a warehouse kind of thing, too, but it's much bigger. And uh, and then some of those some of those uh, influencer guys like Heavy D Bourbon and like some uh, Minute Minute something and uh, those guys were all doing a barrel pick from California and so we crashed their barrel pick <laughs> um, and it was it was a ton of fun and like they were yeah so it's like and they walked up to Amin our buddy his booth because he had a booth there and they're like hey here's who we are. Can we do a barrel pick? He's like, let's do it. Yeah, no, we, we've and got, once we hit, well, right now we're what, in June? Yep. From from July to September, I've got some numbers. We just, as I said, we just need, once we get the house, man. Oh, man, I was talking about Richard about that all morning, too. Uh, it's <laughs> over. Once I have some place to do what I do oh. best, and even here, I go, it's over, my friend. So when we get there, if everything goes right, we should have a voice, because all I've been thinking about is how to leverage and 
lean into all this stuff and uh, put our foot on the ground, you know, in terms of gas. Mm-hmm. So we get down there and the cameras are like, who are you guys? Yep. And then collectively, we're all platforms. They have to look and they're like, oh, God, I love dogs. I actually seen I was at the gun show and the dude was like, because Scott goes, hey, you know he's famous. And Scott, I'm just sitting back here, man. You know he's famous. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the dude who was an ex, not an ex-Marine, a former Marine. <laughs> I got to get that right. Look, never say ex-Marine. I always say former Marine. He, well, why is that specifically they said? What's offensive. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. Yeah, man. yeah, man. He goes, yeah, just, he just, 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 yeah, just because they're you know retired or whatever, they're, it's, it's not... They're not an ex, like an ex-wife. Like that, that marriage hasn't ended. Like they're always a marine. Right. Once a marine, always a marine kind gotcha. of thing. So it's that makes sense. Yeah, former, even army, like yeah, formers. Long story short, a lot of them look me up and goes, "Oh shit, I already followed on YouTube." And I, I just didn't know it was you. I said, "I don't wear dog clothes." That would have gave it away. But, <laughs> but but when you when you look at these people who have dogs, and a lot of those guys have dogs, and a lot of information. I literally just came in today and. We talk about community, right? Mm-hmm. White girl I know out in South Carolina, she said her mom sends her a video uh, saying, don't let your dog drink water off of, after a, an exercise or it's over, you know, been outside. Mm-hmm. Well, the white woman who basically took our video, mm-hmm. the one you cut, chopped it, they send it to them. So they'll never see it on my page, but they'll see it because she cut and chopped it and saying the same things like, yo, she goes, I know that voice. That's true. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, so she did her, she did so like a point sketch. is this. Oh my God. You see the pit bull, the Negroes are pit bulls. <laughs> but the information's there. So because you you cut it and then that one chick and those other ones that took your video and then it's like, oh, and you just used the words. It was like, yeah. When his reach is getting there. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting there reach wise, man. And it's, it's a work in progress, but uh, it's been a hell of a hell of a little last couple of weeks, man. I woke up to people just super excited, man. Yeah, this <laughs> seems like there's a lot going on right now everywhere, man. Man, I think more than we could probably keep up with. But the beauty about it is when you set the tone, you kind of set your pace. Yeah. So you get out there and you point them out, man. We'll be right in their face with a the video. <laughs> I have them, I have them singing the, all kinds of stuff. So man, walk me through settings. They be like, hey, but they can't stop. I'm telling you, they get done. They go, I don't know how you got me to do so much talking. So we were just talking whiskey. Let's go. <laughs> we were just talking dogs. We were just talking life. Yeah, if um, yeah, I can point out certain people to you, and then if we can find out who's going to be there ahead of time, then you can kind of do a little research mm-hmm. on those people. And then I can I can point them out to you. Well, the best tool that I have is ignorance, and ignorance seems like a terrible word. But when you don't know, you don't know. You go, hey, no. Man. And, and maybe I can even introduce you and like, hey, man, he's he's getting into the whiskey space. Yeah, and, that's the point. Uh, you say, hey, guys, listen, my man, I don't want to do whiskey. I just I'll be like this. I just met this guy, and he says he owns something in Texas. <laughs> I said, so he told me you're important, man. Did you tell me how to how to go about doing this? What what do I need to know about whiskey, man? You get those guys going, they're like, oh, this guy played me. <laughs> and look, man, I I love <laughs> on the spot figured it out, man. It's quite pleasant, actually. <laughs> and and he's unboxing some samples. Uh, now Tim's gonna walk us through it. I have no clue what's going on, but he's. Basically, he's about to see if he wants to buy some new barrels. Yeah, so so we're always trying to stay ahead of the curve. And to do that, we not only want to stay relevant on what's available, um, but, uh, but what we need that can make new blends and new mash bills. Like, I'm actually kind of excited about this because we've got, uh, got uh, 100% single malt samples in here and we don't have any uh, 100% single malt so I've had a couple samples of this at other distilleries that source from MGP and I was I was pretty excited about them so so we'll see we'll, we'll see what this is like so um, so I love the lady in the back right yeah, yeah. Thanks. yeah what was the last name in order uh, Juan. Yeah, you wanted it to Wanted wanted it to have a nice glow on the bottles, <laughs> and it's kind of cool too because it makes people say, "Hey, you know what's what's up with that one?" For Twenty years, kill it. I cannot wait to see how he goes. All right. Yeah, just remember that man. You be like, "Damn, I was in there on that fucking day," and that dude told me he was gonna do this one. I'm gonna be in the movie. Hey, you probably will. 
<laughs> it only <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> so they don't let you try any of the barrels, man. A lot of times you feel thief from it. This is probably the best place I've been uh, ever and allows a lot of education. So I got Tony over here, man. And then they have something I think even if you're ever in the area called Brothers Saving Others. So they'll get out and they'll help a lot of people and do things. So today we're going out and, uh, and helping. This is all new to me too, man. New period. But everything Tim does is based on giving back. So a lot of the money that they'll they'll raise in whiskey groups. And I'll get you to get involved in my whiskey group. I got one I just started called Keep the Whiskey. And the goal is going to be wrapped around entrepreneurs and bringing other entrepreneurs together. So having different people to talk about different things will create more opportunities for people to connect this stuff. Yep. I'm not a finance guy. Oh, hey, I got a guy who does finance and great. So talk to him. I'm simply the idea, make the business work, business formulation, operation stuff. Um, and then, of course, I love the podcast and the things. And, and this is my guy that keeps, as you see, the camera on. So I said, look, keep the camera on. I'll, I'll change everyone's life. <laughs> it's that simple, man. But this is my second home. A lot of great things happen here. Man, so what? what you was you, all, you, you, what's your ideas, man? Send me a message, man. I was like, dude. Oh, man. Cool. <laughs> I'm glad I'll you bet came out, man. I bet you, I bet you won't pick me up in the Portland. <laughs> <laughs> That's so unsafe, man. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm, an army, I'm, I'm an army guy. Sorry, I'm not licensed. He didn't want the insurance people like, hey, let's go to insurance, man. Yeah. Oh man, well, we're excited. We're going Bunch of guys, that. couple whiskeys, and a forklift. This is not a good idea. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> a terrible idea. Why'd you even think of that? Well, you did. <laughs> That's, That's how safety briefings happen. <laughs> That's how rules get made. Oh! Make sure she gets in here Come check it out. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the barrel house. You say, Marcus knows what to do, man. He can sell it just like I do. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so far. Don't get caught. That's it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, in here, they'll, like, the barrels age a lot faster in Texas, as you guys probably know. Mm -hmm. um, and the closer the higher they are, the hotter they get, per se. Every one of these barrels has a unique sense to it. I mean, like it's just flavor. There's little berry here that tastes like orange. Like orange. Wow. We never had orange whiskey. We tried one a couple weeks ago that we opened for the first time. Tastes like candy corn. And I'm not exaggerating. Mm. It's wow. nuts. Yeah. Um, and even the one they got over there, if you guys want to try it, we can. It's, it tastes like banana. It's not a banana. That's no. wild. Wow. So you got to buy a bottle. <laughs> You're like, hey, nah. I, I gotta get a bottle. And then, you know, there's a pig, Sherry Cass, that he finishes uh, some of the whiskey in. But I can tell you, it's uh, it's been a blast learning. And you guys, mind you, it's not an experience where you bring in 10, 12 people, hell, sometimes 20. By the time they leave, all those, if you guys blend something specifically, you'll leave with wax bottles. Mm -hmm. So they'll walk out of here, start to finish with the whiskey that you guys made. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's the part. And then, with the labels, you can call it whatever. Right. Checkmate. Check, checkmate check whiskey. whiskey. There you go, checkmate whiskey. That'd be huh. super cool. Yeah, yeah. that'd yeah. be cool. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then keep in mind, you know, Tim talks about how important it is when you, they're sitting at their house, and they're thinking, I gotta get back there. They're yeah. thinking of you every time because mm -hmm. you guys named it, and, and Toyota's already been in here, man. Blackstone's been in here. Fucking man, they, all the people come in here. It's like the most silent place that you do business where great things happen. And just in the past, what, 35, we've been here, what, eight? About, I don't know, six weeks, six, seven six weeks? Six weeks. I've seen more than I probably should. In a good way, because yeah, you, yeah. you, you just never get this type of access to anywhere else, man. Yeah. And that's why I was telling them, I said, dude, I know a lot of people. <laughs> I bring everybody in here, and people send me money, Stan and others, like, yo, well, grab me two bottles a day, man. Because now once you try the whiskey, you can't drink a lot of whiskey. Mm -hmm. you know? It's going to fuck you up. And then if you go get your higher end whiskey, we're talking eighty bottles, eighty dollars, right? You might as well pay extra forty for the good stuff. Yeah. And you don't need as much of it, man. Hundred percent, man. Uh, but even more important, there are a lot of whiskey groups that come in here and barrel their stuff, go through their process, they sell the barrel to their uh, people, the club members, and then they'll donate the rest of the money. Man. That's cool. It's crazy. Man. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It really it's is. a beautiful thing.
Yeah. Or we're supposed to go help with the house, and I don't have any gloves. Yeah, right. To to help move some of the house with. So do you know what the irony is? <laughs> Showing up with gloves. Won't you? Won't he do it? So what all can you use these for? Because this is going to go into a lot of people are going to see this. Yeah. So we use them any any time that you're in. Um, so pretty much what I did was um, during. Now these are actually two two very variations. The one that we have like so this is actually the midnight color is the one that we actually sell currently. These are prototypes we use, but it's all Kevlar. So it's Kevlar. It's Nomex. It's highly um, anti-resistant, abrasive uh, leather. So if you go down the motorcycle, the, 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 that'll take the product of it. So it doesn't go into your skin. That man looks like he's a killer. <laughs> so how, how do those fit on you? Yeah, they fit great. Right. So, so on these, as you see here, um, we've got a different touch points. So you can actually work your iPhone, you work your iPad with the, first, with the second and third finger. That's uh, pretty um, pretty responsive to it. Um, they've got um, the Kevlar material, so that means it's, it's highly resistant to cuts, tear, uh, puncture. Um, and the, the, the rating levels are like three to five on the NC ratings that you see there. So the, the people package, that would I'll use these. Video, man. I got a lot of people that follow me. All right. So the people that would use these, we have it from motorcycle riders to, to first person shooters to, yeah, I've done 30 foot fast ropes with these. I wouldn't do more than 30 foot, but you do a 30 foot. And I wasn't fully laid out, but I had a why, little why, bit of Let kit. me ask you this. Why are you guys climbing up a rope is what I don't understand. Climbing, climbing up a rope? <laughs> Slime down. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, gravity's always on. I'll take, I'll take that one. <laughs> But so what we did was, uh, so during COVID, I went back to school. I went and got my master's, my MBA. And um, really when I was looking at all the different gloves that we had in the military, and then I, when I put them to test to realize we were given crap, like to protect our hands. And it's really a kind of a joke for all the different environments we're in, all the different things that we can come across, and how uh, hands are going to get screwed up in there. So uh, hands are also the third most reported injury, head, neck, and then back, and then hands. And it's one of the most, um, uh, it's the injury that is the most preventable. And so when you look at why people were having hand injuries, what they, why they weren't wearing the proper gloves for the different uh, Either, either they're blue collar workers on the line or whatever, it was because they're either getting secondary skin issues because the gloves didn't breathe properly or it's that they didn't fit properly so they were taking them off or they couldn't do their job with the gloves so they were taking them off. So we rather than waste time. For the podcast, man, you don't understand <laughs> it, huh? So we went through, we went back and we started using, we researched a bunch of uh, different textiles. This could, this could be the modern day Mrs. Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Smith. Mr. Mrs. Mrs. Smith. To be honest with you, we could use a good looking couple on the, on the website <laughs> like right now it's like all dudes and motorcycles and guns we need the hey. we, need, we need the feminize it up a little bit. i can shoot it man i can shoot anything so that'd be so. huge friday morning you want to come out so yeah. easy. I'll, yeah. shoot, I'll shoot whatever they need ghost wise and I'll get some fun shots man. you know hand photography is a real thing they do it in jewelry truck, so I do photography I'll do it I did a GMC oh, commercial I didn't go get a manicure before See, I did that look you already know man yeah. <laughs> don't tell don't act that like you didn't recognize these bad boys uh, I didn't but uh, I know you've been seeing these around shake <laughs> 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 weight <laughs> not my best friend <laughs> You paid great, great. I would do it. That thing was everywhere. It really was. It was. It was, it was uh, so, that is uh, funny. That is a terrible. You were quick with it, man. Yeah, he like was. It. He was on the ground. <laughs> it caught me off guard. Yeah. 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 Got me. So, so I worked in Hollywood for a bit, and um, one of my, when talking with one of my buddies, he's like, "Dude, whatever you do." Don't do soap operas. I'm like, oh my god, no. First job was soap opera. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it was actually one of the best things that you could do for on the job training and how you have to learn your lines, deliver your lines. There's no second takes. It's like, it actually, I actually, so I ended up doing like 100 episodes between three different oh, that's soap awesome. operas. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. That's why I tell you, man, post by post, man, when you're living in the social media, we don't do second takes. Yeah. The camera's like, hey, can you cut that? Right. You should have got it right the first time. Okay. We got to move on. So this kind of guy right here is another one. Like, if you get him out to your place, yeah. You guys get you get better going back and forth, telling about your story and history and your team, go through your process. He's got background. And I love MBAs because 
I don't like them, to be honest. But I like them. It's, it's better than a BA. That's what I'm saying. The, the, the <laughs> BAs, it's a different BAs, story. The BAs are taught to run a business. Yeah, the yeah, MBAs are taught to create a business. So yeah, yeah. that's the difference. Like you literally, business, uh, you know, bachelor's yeah, administration or PA, whatever that bullshit is. You're like, oh, let me run somebody's business. But he's taught to think intuitively. Yeah, Good. That's why you will never drop know, that man. glass of whiskey. I, I, I wouldn't drop it that much. <laughs> so even if he, if he did, he wouldn't cut himself with it. Yeah, you'd be that fine. That part right so. there, man. This is interesting, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what's this say on here? Triple Gambit. That's the name Triple of the company. Triple Gambit. Yep. And you came up with the name? So, yeah. She just needs your gloves, man. Absolutely. Done. What's your day rate? Oh, wow. Heck yeah. <laughs> what's the day rate? Heck yeah. Let me see that. Do you need the gloves? So, oh, oh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a layer oh, for you. Snap. For you know, Dos Equis. Dos Equis. Right? Most interesting man in the world. That's what they say. He's also a race car driver for Aston Martin. What? Yeah, hey, look. I'm a high performance. High performance. Let's go, man. It's showtime, buddy. <laughs> we, we got a run. It was good to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. Please got my info from these guys. Absolutely. Nice Absolutely. gloves. Oh, thank, thank you, brother. You. My man. Hey, man. So good to see you, brother. Absolutely, man. It's great to see you. Absolutely. Great to see you again as well, too. Yes, sir. I'll see you tomorrow. Likewise. Friday. Awesome, brother. Great meeting you. All right, man. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you Friday, man. Yeah, man. These are so good. I don't know how to get them off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me try them on real quick. I hear, I hear all this banter about them. Like, yeah, I gotta. If you don't know, I'm here. Right? I literally want to get out of gloves immediately, so I gotta be honest with saying, like, those. So how do your hands feel right now? Oh, they feel good, man. I, the, the breathable thing, because I don't like the, the so shit sweating, dude. It's just not a good yeah. feeling, man. So it's funny. So uh, really cool. What so is that, it? Um, the flour mill? Yeah, the old flour mill. And then <laughs> in, the, in the basement of it, it is, um, yeah, it's like they turned it into a bar and like kind of reception area. Damn, dude. So this is downtown McKinney? Or where is this down? Yeah, we're, we're just east of downtown McKinney. So so the McKinney Square is directly behind us. And they're they're actually they're they're building a um, they're building an underground like walkway to get from like over this area over to the square. There'll be a, a tunnel system. Holy crap. Yeah, man. They got some cool stuff going. Demoing all the old stuff. Making it, making it right. Oh, wow, dude, I've never. <laughs> How are you doing, man? Good, man. Hey. What's, what's his name? Uh, Bob. He just walked in that room. Okay. Alright. Uh, Jamarcus just got here. So Jamarcus just got here. Who is Bob? Do you know who Bob is? How you doing, man? Good, good, good. So, so far, so good, man. You got gloves? Oh, you got some things. I don't know where they need the most help. I, we just got here, too. Who's it? They're gutting the house, man. They're gutting the house. So, um, I have no clue what's happening, but unfortunately, I'm about to have to get my hands dirty. <laughs> How you doing, man? Good. That's good, man. Well, uh, shit. Well, Let's yeah, go. so do we have uh, assignments? Or? They about to give us some. Uh, Trevor, man. Just Bob. Okay. Hey, Bob. Bob. Marcus. Pleasure. 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 Howdy. 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 Bro. 
all in the day's work, right? Yeah, I say. Good. Yeah. What's the wonder? What's going to do today? Yeah, more than they could. Let's see it now. So you guys know you have a, a, I don't want to say a time limit, but like a frame in which you guys are, hey, we'll come out for two hours in and then. Man, this is actually, this is like a, we're switching it up. So we're going Tuesdays now. So we're doing kind of a study throughout the week. And then Tuesdays, we're going to start actually serving. So that way, uh, that way we can actually put the hands to work, but also still get in the Bible and the book. And we're, we're kind of doing a uh, five day, is it a five day lesson right now that we've got? And uh, that way we can all feed into it and everybody sees everything. And so it's on the, uh, the Bible app. And then we'll come here on Tuesdays and start doing BSL a little bit more, get a little more active out there. There we go. So objectively, I've got um, my arms all white. It's about 9.40 at night. And, uh, man, it's been a day. This is what behind the scenes looks like, man. Nine stop every day. I think it's day eight or nine or whichever it is. It's been pure, pure chaos in a good way. Got to talk to a Navy SEAL. So stay tuned because the podcast is going to be crazy. It was good with him. We're going to talk to him some more. Hats all white, man. It's been, it's been a day, man. Guys, keep killing it, stay motivated, and stay moving.
Is that was for Alex? I'm talking about. I remember why. All I had to do is drive up the street and go right to OMG. It would been better than this and cheaper. Unpacking today as we wrap up this day. Uh, this is actually a whiskey that they have at the blendery. It's called Banana Hammock. And it literally tastes like banana bread in a barrel. These guys blended and made it perfect. Today, I repeat, I got to sit down with a Navy SEAL who drove professionally in some of the largest, he was a professional race car driver. On top of that, he was in Transformers. We went to the scene that he was in and he's been in soap operas and other things. And it's all because of our guy, Andrew, who said, no, you got to meet this guy. I've already received a message from him, text message like, yo, I'm out of town <sighs> till Monday, Tuesday, but let's connect next week. What I'm enjoying about all the military guys that I'm meeting who have crazy connections is them jokers follow through. The, what I've learned is in the military, the most important thing they have is their word. That's it. So if they say they're going to do something, they're going to do something. So Andrew texts me earlier today and goes, ma'am, I got a dozen ideas. I want to run them by you. You're going to be at the blender today. I said, I'll be there this time. And guess who else came? Our guy, Tyler. Tyler brought his wife. They got to come in there and uh, sit down and do the podcast with him. The irony is, is all of us tomorrow <laughs> are going to be on Tactical Talk, their podcast. <sighs> if I could give anybody advice, say yes more. Be more open-minded to the days that are ahead. Got to thank, you know, Jamarcus and the people who are in support of what I'm doing because if I can go out and create opportunities to build relationships, I don't think we get there. And when when opportunities on the table, it happens fast, it happens quick, and in a, in, in a hurry. We got to go participate in Brother Serving Others. Um, the area we were in, they used to sell drugs. Guy bought the house, redid it. He turned it into fruits and veggies for kids. He's using the neck, the house next door. And we were ripping out the walls and things, as you may have seen, because he's going to turn it into a place where kids can come and do their schoolwork and, and study. Uh, 
and get on computers and learn and uh, create a pantry and it's like a little snack closet and stuff like this. It's, it's going to be cool, man. I mean, and, and these guys, they get out there and they have three or four week projects. So <sighs> what I can tell you is I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I know I'm going to show up, people. Stay tuned. Stay motivated. Thank you guys for watching.